Hey, welcome back to the Engineer Channel. Today we're going to talk about my Honda PCX 150 scooter. You're going to want to see this. Come right back. So this is my Honda PCX 150. This scooter replaces the Honda Elite line that went for forever since about 1986 until about uh, when these these were released. This particular example is a 2013 model. I bought this in 2020. There's some deals out there, y'all. I bought this in 2020. It had 324 miles on it. So for 1,800 bucks, you get a lot of bike for 1,800 bucks. Okay, so I originally was going to uh, use this in my trade-up series, but I've had it for about two and a half, three weeks. And I might kind of be in love with it, and I don't know, it might be hard to part with, but uh, we'll see. Let me show you around the scooter. So if you ask me, this is the best view of this bike is the front end. To me, when you see this bike for the first time, it looks a lot bigger. It has a bigger spirit than it actually is. It looks like a little miniature sport bike to me. What do you think? So in 2013, some of the complaints you got about this bike were that the headlights and the blinkers were incandescent, and they could have been LED, been a little bit brighter. That's probably true. It's not something you really notice when you're riding, but that was corrected in the later models, and now when you buy one of these PCX now, you get the uh, LED lights. But uh, the incandescent is just fine. You're going to like that just fine. Um, I love the front end of this bike. It's very aerodynamic, 14-inch wheels. On some of the smaller scooters, like the little older Honda uh, Elite scooters, the, um, they had 10-inch tires on them, which if you're going over railroad tracks or potholes, it really can give you a little steer there uh, when you're riding. This has 14-inch wheels on the front and back, which is a lot better when uh, going over obstacles in the road. It's a lot easier to traverse them. So in 2013, you could get the PCX 150 in two flavors. You could get it in red or black. This is the red, and this is the, oh, obviously it's the red, right? This is the candy red. So it's a candy paint job, which means it has a, a first coat of silver and then a light coat of red over the top of that with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, me of uh, pearl in it for sparkle. And the paint, it's one of the prettiest paint jobs I have ever seen. I would love to have this on a, on a new Corvette or something. I mean, this, this color red is really fantastic. Um, this is has the engine on this bike is a 153 cc liquid cooled motor, so it's liquid cooled, not air cooled like all the old motors were. Uh, the bike itself has, um, you know, obviously it's a scooter, so all of the uh, motor is carried by the weight. The weight of the motor is carried by the rear wheel, so that the engine weight is unsprung. Also, the engine weight is is down low. When I'll show you the other side of the bike, that that low uh, mounting position for the motor makes the uh, balance on this bike extremely good so the handling is extremely good so let me show you an example of that all right like most scooters on this side you can see we got a regular side stand and then you also have a center stand here. The bike, of course, cuts off if you uh, lower the uh, side stand. If you have it on the center stand, you can have the bike running. And then, of course, you get a, a shot of the uh, engine, and it's super clean, very aerodynamic. There's not a lot showing back here, and that's because that engine is liquid cooled. You don't have to have all that air going across it and fans and, uh, you know, intake ports and all that kind of thing. And so it really looks slick on the side. So. The suspension, hmm, with a big boy on it like me, it only has about three and a half inches of travel. And if I hit a dip in the road, I can certainly bottom it out. So that's kind of a, that's it. it the suspension is a, it's marginal for a big boy. Uh, it does have a, a brake lock on it. So you can set the brake and then pull out on this and it will set the uh, brake on there. It's like an emergency brake. If you're parked on a hill, I guess. And then, uh, pull it out and release it there you go so you've got a park brake on it it does have a little bit of a higher step through on the front than the older scooters did which uh, doesn't allow you to carry loads between your legs as easily as you could on the on the uh, older scooters it also has a, a, a little small glove box for 
putting your uh, mask in, right? Or whatever you're keeping your cell phone. And the other, the older, the newer versions have a um, USB port in the um, in the glove box, so you can charge your phone and whatnot. So for carrying passengers, you've got a little bit of accommodation. We've got a uh, footrest on either side that flips out, and you've got a small spot to sit here. And then the the 13 model had the little built-in kind of backrest, if you will, which kind of limits your seating position um, for bigger people like me. Um, and if there's one thing that must be said about these scooters, I've had a lot of Hondas, I have a lot of Hondas, I have scooters, I have small bikes, I have big bikes. This seat is not very soft. You won't want to ride 200 miles with this seat because it's, uh, it's, it's quite uh, firm. So there are a lot of aftermarket seats on the uh, market that people have come up with to uh, replace these because they are a little firm. It's a, it's, it's a very firm seat. All right, so here's your uh, view from the driver's seat. On your left handlebar, you have the uh, horn and your signal cancel. Most of these bikes, the horn's on the bottom. This one, the horn is in the middle, and so a lot of the time when you go to honk the horn, you wind up pushing the signal cancel instead. You've got your high beam, low beam, and then on the other handlebar, of course, you've got your uh, run and kill switch, and then the uh, starter switch below that. So pretty standard. Uh, this bike is, is not built in Japan. This bike was built by Honda in Thailand, but the build quality is nonetheless supreme. It's, it's really superb. So uh, here's a shot of the instrument cluster. Let's just turn the key and see how it lo looks like when it fires up. See your speedometer coming to life there. You've got a uh, check engine light that comes on for a second there, and then... Um, You've got your mileage and your fuel gauge digital on the right, your turn signals, high beam, low beam, and then you've got some uh, idiot lights over there for the uh, water temperature when it gets too hot because this is, again, liquid cooled. And then, of course, you've got your uh, reset button here. So not a whole lot of controls, but just enough what you need for a scooter. So the next interesting thing I want to show you is the key switch. The key, let's turn this off, the key, you see, has a little... Uh, little diamond shaped key there and that will fit into this little lock down here and when you twist this it uh, covers up the ignition switch so that's a little theft deterrent option that these came with the other thing is is when you insert the key if you turn the key one click okay that allows you to have a fuel and seat switch here now I can push up and the fuel door opens up. You can see the fuel door here between your legs, okay? And then, of course, if you push down, your seat will come up. Let me show you what that looks like. So under your seat, you have ample storage. You have room under here for a helmet. Uh, you can see that you think, oh no, the seat will cover it, but wait there's a bulge in the uh, top of the seat cushion that's why the seat cushion is not very squishy because you have a lot of that space that would have been taken up with seat foam is now so that your helmet can stop, uh, fit in there uh, with the seat closed so you can put a bag of groceries in there or a helmet or you know it's, it's quite a bit of storage underneath the uh, seat on these and you also have a little uh, a little tool kit which you can see right here so one final note about this let's talk about performance the bike has a one and a half gallon tank and one gallon of fuel in this will run you about, will take you about a hundred miles. Uh, I've seen people reporting that they're getting up to 120 miles per gallon on this bike. So it is extremely fuel efficient and I would contribute that to uh, the aerodynamic shape of the bike. Um, so fuel economy is excellent. So with me on this bike, full man size, 220 pounds. 6.3, right, going down the highway, uh, I, can, I can achieve 63, 64 miles an hour on this bike. And so in highway traffic, you're, you're okay. I wouldn't want to get it on the interstate with this, but uh, from uh, zero to 50 is where this bike is really uh, at home. It's really zippy. It's a, it's a, it picks up very quickly. Uh, but if you stretch it out, you can get about 63, 64 miles an hour out of this. So 
the 150 cc engine gets you a little bit more speed than the smaller bikes of yesteryear the uh, 80 cc bikes so let's get this little bike out on the road and let's get some action shots and see what it looks like going down the road also we're outside i want you to try and listen for this this bike has before we go an interesting feature it's one of my very favorites is the starting of the bike instead of using a starter with a bendix that pops out and grabs a flywheel and makes a bunch of racket this uses a direct drive starter from the alternator. So see if you can hear this start up. I'm gonna turn the key on here. Here it goes, ready? It's just an instant start. It just rolls the motor over and it's going. There is no banging around and clanging and starter motor sound. Really cool. All right, let's put our helmet on. Let's go for a ride. All right, let's go for a ride, huh? All right, so there you go. What do you think? The Honda PCX 150. It's one of my new favorite scooters. I know, I can already hear the YouTube safety patrol going, you were riding in sneakers and shorts? Yes, I'm living dangerous today. So if you think you're gonna buy one of these and you're like debating, should I buy a PCX or should I buy maybe a monkey? Stay tuned, in the next video, we're gonna compare the Honda monkey to the PCX and see which one would you go buy? So join us again next time on the Engineer Channel. See you then.